Hi, I'm Cindy Abbott Litro for Behind the Camera, and today we are in uh, Ilio de Palo's restaurant. When I first came to Buffalo a long time ago, uh, Ilio and his wife Ethel were, you know, larger than life in this community, and this was certainly an iconic restaurant, and it still is. At that time, I think it was oh. sort of the hangout for the Buffalo yeah, Bills, yeah, and yeah. I remember bocce games at your Absolutely. father's house, yeah, uh, father and mother's. You're a bocce champion, too, oh, I tell well, you. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. But Dennis, you've become, I, your, your dad would probably not even, um, you know, believe this, but you've had cameo roles and movies that have been done here. And so much of, you know, we feature things about the <coughs> film industry, but part of what makes uh, the film industry want to come to Buffalo is not only the film credits, but the fact that there are wonderful places like this. Uh, you know, uh, Fred and Chris Ray have yeah, done how right. many movies in your restaurant? Well, they've done, we had an old gentleman did one, they've done, I believe, five movies wow. that have been here. Yeah, so uh, they've, uh, they've been, and they, you're right, I mean, they just love, first of all, they love the people, and it was, that's what Fred and I had always talked about and Chris about, that's what brought my father to the Buffalo, was well, the wasn't people. Fred a, a wrestler? And he was and a professional wrestler, yeah, yeah. And when he came here, he must have just been knocked out by all the things in your father's oh, yeah, history. Yeah. Tim Clark brought him in, and he goes, I got to see, he talked about wrestling, so I got to bring you to Ilio de Paulo's. And as soon as Fred came in, he looked around, and he went to pictures, and you know, I said, hey, your food's getting cold, let's go. But he, uh, <laughs> he loved it. He goes, Dennis, can I film here? I go, absolutely. He goes, we don't, you don't see restaurants like this in California. You don't see this around. This is this is Buffalo. This is history here, and this one, and it's amazing what they can do and turn this restaurant into a, a nightclub, into a, uh, an Italian, a French restaurant, a coffee shop. <laughs> I mean, a Christmas uh, uh, a cocktail area. It's just it's amazing what the work that they do and how they make it. But they do love the people in Buffalo, and they said it's the hospitality they receive here is one of the main reasons why they come back to Buffalo. Dennis, I'm told that in addition to cameo roles, you had actually some speaking you know, a speaking part. And there was one that uh, required you to be not a restaurateur, but yeah. a reporter. Yes, a reporter. Dane Forrester, actually, in an uh, assault on VA-33. And it was down being filmed at the uh, Cheektowag Emergency Center. And actually, I called Bob Kaczynski. I said, Bob, I'm going to be you. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be a reporter live on the scene. You know, so, OK, OK, good. Some tips, right? So I get there. I'm prepared. I'm in the prep room. I'll just get the suit, get everything ready to go. And, you know, it's a cold day outside. and. And I really got my lines down. I got like six lines, you know, Dean Force reporting on the scene. So I walk out and they go, Dennis Apollo to set. My cameraman and I go out there. We're all ready to roll. So Chris calls me. Hey, Dennis, come here for a second. Yeah, what's up, Chris? He goes, just be you. Go, be me. He goes, no. I go, I, no, I want to be, I, I, I be Dane Forrester. I'm ready. <laughs> he goes, no, 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 no. We wouldn't think about it. Just be you out here. And I go, well, you know how difficult it is to try and describe a scene with guns and bombs and cars and people screaming? And there's nothing going on behind you because that's going to go in later. It's just like, no, Dane, I, I, no, there's nothing to describe. But I, I really, I, let me be Dane Forrester. No, be you. I went, oh man. So we did three, uh, three takes on it. And actually, the third take, I was so frustrated. I took my mic. I go, and I'm getting the hell out of here. And I shove it into my <laughs> cameraman's chest, and he goes back. The camera goes up, and Chris goes, okay, perfect, great. I went, what? That was terrible. He goes, no, you're fun. So they, anyways, we, oh, at the end of the, the filming, they all come back to the restaurant and before they leave town and we're all laughing about the scenes and different things and, and they go, you did great. I go, no, it was terrible. You know, it's just terrible. And he said, no, no, Dennis, you, you made the cut. I go, no, only because of great editing did I make the cut ah. because I don't think I did a good job at all, so. How's the hair? Beautiful. Dane Forrester here, Action News at VA 33. Not sure what's going on here right now, but as you can see, we've had gunfire, we've had explosions. We, uh, we have a lot of uh, good, good stories when we get those talking parts. The other ones are fine. He goes, he tells you just you can be you and be in a, seating a table or taking an order. That's fine. Well, and one of the things is it must be fun for you to sort of get to know these people and to watch them do something that's really, it's, you know, totally different from what you do in your everyday oh, life. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. But, you know, we, and that's what they always say, then it's just be you and these guys, wow, you know, and there's instances where I didn't want to be me. I go, no, I want to be, <laughs> I want to be this thing forced a reporter. But, you know, they say, yeah, just kind of do your, do your thing, greet the tables, seat the tables. And it's been pretty cool how we've, uh, through the, the four films that I've been in with them and had the lines and stuff, we've had a lot of fun with it. Excuse me. You're the guest, sir. Ryan. Right on time. Oh, thanks for the invite. You must be Sarah Conrad. Um, I'm Ryan Charles. 
Pleased to meet you. Ryan owns the Riviera Theater. Uh, grab a seat. If I'm not intruding, I... Uh, no, please. I was just about to leave. Excuse me, Miss Conrad. May I trouble you for an autograph, please? For the restaurant. Of course. Well, it, for those folks, and we have an interview, both Fred and Chris Ray, they're really uh, sort of famous for uh, turning East Aurora into oh, this gosh, major yeah. film star as <laughs> yeah. well because of yeah. their Hallmark films. Uh, but you were getting ready to really remodel the restaurant when yeah. they heard about that, and he really said no. He said no. My son and I were going over. Good time to remodel a restaurant, the dining room. Let's do this. He wants to do the modern look. And then when Fred was here, I called Lily over. I said, hey, listen to me. He goes, don't you touch his dining room. This is, you do not see this in anywhere anymore. And he says, this, this is traditional Italian, and this way you should remain it. You can change the bar if you want, and the lounge, which we did change the ringside lounge. But, you know, you keep the restaurant here. And, and it's amazing how they transform the restaurant every time they're here. Well, now, all of you are Elios, because yes. your name is Elio Dennis, Correct. right? Yep. That, how did that happen? Your father was an Elio, you were an Elio, right. and your son is an Elio. Yeah. It could get oh, pretty yeah. confusing. Oh, it does. Well, that's <laughs> why I was, my father was Elio Paul DePaulo, and I was um, Elio Dennis DePaulo, because my mother wanted a Dennis to menace, and I don't <laughs> so still to this day, Mom, what are you kidding? And then, but we had my son, Elio David, and when we said, when I came back from the hospital at Sisters when we had Ilio and that whole it was a Friday night and everybody's going, hey, you know, David, Ilio, what's his name? I go, Ilio David. And then one customer said, David, what a beautiful name. Means the beloved one. Father no, his name is going to be Ilio. And the whole place, the restaurant said, okay, it's Ilio from here on in. So <laughs> I'm the one that got skipped into generations there. So, yeah. But um, what's interesting is your son could have really done a lot of different things, but... Uh, He's now, you know, sort of getting ready to step in and take over and yeah. be the, the third generation. Yeah, third generation. Yeah, he, uh, you know, actually he worked with the Bills there for a year or so and has offered to stay on. And, you know, he said, look, I don't want to waste anybody's time, but I want to join the family business. And I did tell him, you do know your weekends are now Monday and Tuesday, right? This is a 24-7 <laughs> business. And he said, fine. And in fact, he's even trying to bump me out of the movie business now, too. I mean, he had a cameo with uh, Fred's uh, The Royal Engagement and Christmas time is the... And he was even, you know, trying to um, plug along Chris and Fred. Hey, how about a couple more lines on this, you know? So it's funny. So he's already trying to bump me out now, you know. <laughs> I was thinking about it. It must be fun to watch the um, them filming because it takes a long time. Oh, yeah. I mean, they work hard mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. you know, to light things and to move things. But in some ways, it's sort of like the restaurant business and the fact mm -hmm. that it can be really crowded. Yep. And then there can be a lull. And then you have to be ready for when that yeah. moment comes. It sure does. It's amazing. They start at like 5. They're here. Trucks are all pulled up at 5 in the morning. I'll come rolling in about 6. You guys, are, and they're already unloading. They're getting stuff set up in their instance. So it's like the calm before the storm. And then once they go action quiet on the set, everything cuts. I mean, we, we're unplugging compressors, you know, air conditioners. So there's total dead silence. I mean, this restaurant is boom, total, no phones, no nothing. It shuts down. And then, okay, scene's over, okay, let's back up, everything powers back up again, get your calls out. It's just amazing how, you know, action on a set, boom, that's it, everything, uh, everything quiet. So then the rush, and it's just like, so it's pretty, pretty interesting to see how they do it. You well, mentioned a little bit at the top the fact that the reason people like to come here is there is this sort of, there's a warmth and a welcoming, and people really try to make whatever you're doing a success. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and you have done that here. What kind of you know, relationships have you developed? I mean, what, what kind of interesting things have happened that you never thought about? Well, everything you always, you know, you, you develop, your, your family continues to grow every day. Just like Fred and Chris out of nowhere, it's like all of a sudden it's like family now. And then we're texting and different, it just it becomes that. And it's all about your network, your people close to you. You are who you hang around with. And um, when I see Fred and Chris and their team, Jerry and all, what a great team he had. No, why he's very successful. You know, I look at my team here at the restaurant. I mean, you know, Patty, a lot of our people that have been with us for many years, uh, Karen's and all, Tony, Carl, 30 some plus years. That, you know, those are the, your family grows. In fact, the other day, the one cook was telling me, he goes, you know, Dennis, I probably spend more time with you than I do with my own family. I go, yeah, yeah we do, right? I go, and that's that's the pretty cool thing about it is that your family is grows to be so much. And uh, sincerely appreciate the, what everybody does in my father's name. Well. You know, this has been a tough time, a terrible year. 2020 is something I think we all want to sort of, you know, put behind us, uh, and particularly tough, I think, for the restaurant industry. 
Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been really, <laughs> it was kind of surreal kind of walking through here during Christmas time. You know, we're watching Royal Engagement and there's nobody in this restaurant. No Christmas parties. You know, Christmas decorations are up, but there's nobody here. And it was kind of a, a, a very sad time for us, you know, not only struggling, but just trying to feed your people. I mean, we just gave everybody gift cards in the restaurant. Come shop at the restaurant. I mean, because there was nothing flowing through. It was, and it was a, a difficult time, but, um, you know, like my son said, we got to look ahead. The Roaring Twenties are coming, just like in 1918. I go, good enthusiasm. I love it, right? So, and that's kind of the way I think a lot of people are looking at it. Like, let's let's get through this here, and we'll we'll make it happen. And um, which is, you know, we're we're moving ahead. During this terrible time, uh, you lost your mom, and that was sort of one of the last, you know, with your yeah. dad and your yeah. mom, who were yeah. the anchor for this restaurant, this family. Um, has it made you sort of reflect on on what's important and and you know what motivates you going forward? Yeah, you know that they uh, their simple dream we continue to you know make it happen. You know, my father opened up a restaurant because it's six three two hundred eighty five pounds. As you know, we had food <laughs> at the house, right? Yeah. You know what? I never want to be hungry again. And the reason to open up a restaurant, he never will. And that was kind of we continue to build on that. And uh, I feel we're very blessed with everything we've done. I mean, I look back now and. How uh, my father passed away, Bud Carpenter, Jim Kelly, the Buffalo Bills started the Ola DePaulo Scholarship Fund. And now to this day, very successful, over a million, 1.2 million we've given back into the community through the scholarship fund alone. And Bob Kaczynski will tell you the, the job that the, the wrestling did, you know, the wrestlers came back and really did the Legends of the Odd, was huge for our community. So, I mean, it's, that, that's the beautiful part of, of this whole family thing and, and that we're, uh, we're really excited. Well, it's a beautiful part of this region. Yes. Because yeah. you may be located in a certain place, mm -hmm. But I think other parts of the community all, I mean, the outpouring mm -hmm. of grief for your mom's passing, of recognizing what an yeah. extraordinary woman she was well, and, and what she did. But uh, it, it makes you proud yeah. to be a part of this community. Oh, yeah, no, no doubt about it. And they welcomed my mother and father tremendously. I mean, we had nothing. We, you know, I showed the kids that we lived in a trailer park in Van Wick, 44. Lackawanna, it's just like, we could, popular, we couldn't even fit in that trailer. I said, well, they did, but they made it survive. <laughs> and, um, you know, and then Dominic DiNucci and Bruno, when they were here, they're saying, oh, we used to sleep there all the time. You know, how would they fit in a trailer, right? But everybody managed back in those days, and it was, uh, it was you know, as tough as it was, my mother would always say, we had such a beautiful life. Your father and I traveled throughout the world. I mean, we lived in Australia, you know, and my sister Barbara was born in California, you know, lived up in Calgary, and, you know, throughout, down south in Texas all the way through, and, it was just really like my mother, she always said, you know, when she was by his side, traveled everywhere with him, and, you know, because they had nothing, so she had, you know, he would not eat her food until she took a bite. She was ill, I'm full, but she knew she had to feed him to keep him to his strength so he could wrestle it, that they would, I mean, just some, were unbelievable stories um, that they had, and, you know, we don't ever want to lose that sight of, you know, where we're from. You know, we had nothing, and you continue to work and stay as a family and your friends, and, you know, God willing that uh, he blesses you with success. Well, what's great about it is that the story of the success of the restaurant, uh, the wonderful stories of your family, all of the friends that you've made over the years, there are all the things that in a way uh, want, make people want to make more films in Buffalo, yeah. uh, create those friendships, and uh, take advantage of the hospitality and the great, I mean, look at this, this <laughs> setting that you've provided yeah, yeah. for them. So much success to you, and many, many more cameos, Dennis. Well, well thank you so much. I like that you... <laughs> Your acting career is, is, oh, is, is heating up. Oh, it's well, you're going to be my agent then. Good job. <laughs> Fred, you hear that? <laughs> Chris, how about that? <laughs> oh, Dennis, thank you no, so thank much. You. Very good. Uh, I'm Cindy Abbott-Leitro from Behind the Camera. See you next time.